Salem lies in the far northeast corner of the Commonwealth. Salem, like Concord and Quincy, is a town with a number of ruined buildings and a few unique interior cells. Salem also comes with a unique quest line just for this little town, so let's explore the place. When you reach the most northerly tip of Salem, you find a bunch of mire lurks trying to get into a house. This is the Rook family house. After you dispatch the mire lurks, somebody shouts at you from the house. Are you crazy? Get out of the street before any more of them catch wind of you! Look, I'll open the gate and you get in here quick! I'm gonna let you in the bunker! Don't make me regret this! Barney invites you to join him in his bunker, which you can access via a floor hatch in the living room of the ruined house. Once inside, Barney berates you. Apparently he thinks that he saved your life. Son, did someone drop you on your head as a baby, or did you have to work to get this stupid? That was stupid of me. I know. I wasn't thinking. No kidding! You weren't thinking! Wandering around like some aimless child looking for their lost balloon. Luckily, I've got Reba here to help me crack those crabs wide open. Isn't that right, girl? Who's Reba? Are you, are you talking about your gun? She's not just a gun. She's top of the line. Best gun in the Commonwealth. Made her with my own two hands. Oh, where are my manners? Introductions. Barney Rook, commander of the Salem Volunteer Militia at your service. I'm also the Quartermaster, Sergeant-at-Arms, and Scribes for all official meetings. This here is Reba. But you two already met when she saved your life. Thank you, Reba. And thank you, Barney. No thanks needed, sir. The Salem Volunteer Militia is at the service of the people of the Commonwealth. Duty is its own reward. Reba says you're welcome. Now, I'd love to sit here gabbing all day like a couple of housewives. But we've got some work to do, and by we, I most definitely mean you. Before you showed up, the Meyer Lurks had been mostly quiet, and those that were a problem were quickly dispatched by my turret defense system. Since things had been quiet lately, I took the turrets offline to conserve ammunition. Obviously, they need to be reactivated. And that's your mission, soldier. I'm going to continue to hold down the home front while you go reactivate the turrets. Sounds good. Of course it sounds good. I'm a tactical genius. Smartest man in town, as a matter of fact. The turrets should be easy enough to find. They're up high in strategic locations around town. Just be careful. All your noise probably woke up more crabbies and other mire lurks. The town could be crawling with them by now. Well, Barney seems like a friendly kind of sort. Let's help the fellow out by restoring power to his turrets. The nice thing about this cellar is that nothing is marked owned, which means you can loot to your heart's content. On the desk in the back of the room, we find guns and bullets, which permanently increases the critical damage dealt by ballistic weapons by 5%. In the back of the room, we find a locked door that cannot be picked. This can only be opened with a key. Back outside, if you go upstairs, we find an armor workbench on the second floor. And on the third floor, we find a couple ammunition boxes filled with ammo and a fuse box. This is the fuse box he used to open the gate for us. But when you get to it, it's non-functional. Flipping it doesn't open or close the gate. Moving on outside, we find mire lurks around every corner. Salem is a great place to visit if you need mire lurk eggs and mire lurk meat. You find mire lurks, even legendary mire lurks, and some mire lurk kings. The only thing we miss here in Salem is a mire lurk queen. I did not find one on either of my characters when I visited it. Now the first turret is at the top of the ruined restaurant. If you try to climb the stairs on the inside, you find that your path is blocked. There's no stairway to the roof. To get to the roof, go to the scaffolding around the back of the building, which leads you to the roof. The first turret is guarded by a lot of mire lurks, one of which in my case was legendary, so prepare for a fight. At the very top near a mire lurk nest is the first turret. To activate the turret, just open up the terminal using the password that he gave you. Enter the password, activate the turret, and you're good to go. Now the second one is on a rooftop of a nearby connected building. Head outside, go down the stairway, and then turn right. 
you can walk across the rooftops of these connected buildings to find the turret and activate it using the terminal. Now these turrets are all really weak. They're all Mark 1, and Mark 1 turrets are the weakest forms of turrets. Additionally, they don't appear to start firing upon anything until you initiate combat yourself or a Meyer Lurk attacks you. When they do start firing, they do so little damage that they're almost completely worthless. Maybe they're more impressive earlier in the game, but in later stages, they're hardly worth your time. From this building, if you walk south down the alleyway past the church, you find a Drumlin Diner. This Drumlin Diner is one of the saddest Drumlin Diners in the game. Inside, we find seven skeletons left over from the day the bombs dropped. They were all eating meals in this restaurant. On the chalkboard, we find the word scrawled, All are welcome. Behind the counter, we see a skeleton wearing a chef's hat. What's strange about this is, even though these skeletons are all clearly from before the war, we find fresh meat lying on the ground from mongrels and even Brahmin. So a slight bit of incontinuity there. Directly next to the Drumlin Diner is the third turret. It's actually on the ground level behind a closed gate. You can activate it the same way you activated all the others. Next to this turret station is what appears to be a pre-war clothing shop, a high-end ritzy clothing shop. The interior is wood panel lined. We've got a bunch of mannequins set up looking nice. This is a great place to go for sunglasses and clothing items in a variety of shapes. You can find patrolman sunglasses, regular sunglasses, fancy sunglasses, fedoras and trilbies, and men and women's clothing. Great for outfitting your settlers or companions, or even yourself. Upstairs, we find a duffel bag filled with ammunition and one other ammunition crate. Next to the church is an outdoor marketplace. I'm not sure if this was erected before or after the war, but my guess is that it was erected after the war due to what we find for sale on the inside. One of them is selling sports memorabilia, gloves and baseballs. Another is selling packaged, boxed food. The third has some beakers and flasks, so maybe it was a shop selling chems at one point. And the final one is selling more clothing items, including a gray knit hat. The fourth turret is at the top of the church. When you pass the podium, you find an eight ball, more precisely, a magic eight ball. It's larger than a typical eight ball you're gonna find in the game. I guess this is Bethesda's way to subtly knock religion. Up the stairs and we find a children's play area with a footlocker filled with ammunition. At the very end, going up towards the steeple, underneath the stairs, we find a coffin filled with bones. This is creepy and upsetting due to the nature of the history of Salem. Did these exist before the war or were they placed after? My bet is before. Tucked behind the stairs, if you crouch down and squeeze in, you find a stash of caps. Up the stairs to the top of the steeple, we find a mini nuke underneath the terminal that activates the fourth turret. There are two turrets actually connected to this terminal on the roof of the church. The fifth and final turret can be found in the ruins of the Rook Military Surplus Shop. The door is barricaded and blocked up, but you can go around to the side where we find uh, some scaffolding set up that leads to the interior of the cell where we find a fat man, of all things, lying on a grocery shelf next to a bunch of boxed food and the final turret. In the bottom of the military surplus, you can jump over the countertop to loot the cash register and some loose change behind the cash register and also to unlock the first of three safes that we find in all of Salem. This is excellent for those of you who have maxed out your scavenger perk, making Salem a gold mine for ammunition. Next to the Rook family house is a cemetery, which I think we are meant to believe is centuries old. Each of the gravestones does have engraved text on them, but they're really weird and hard to read. They almost look as if multiple text layers have been overlaid on top of one gravestone. Some of them even look like they have been overlaid backwards. The only gravestone that was legible is barely legible. I was able to make out the words Thomas Webb died very suddenly, 1769. 
something like that. Now, I don't think that there's any story associated with these particular gravestones because they actually all say the same thing. I found two of the gravestones that said the exact same name, Thomas Webb. One of them was actually backwards. It was the Thomas Webb text, but written backwards on the gravestone. So I have no idea what Bethesda was doing here. However, in doing research for this, I discovered that the text on this gravestone is from a real gravestone found in Boston, Massachusetts. The real gravestone reads like this. Here lies deposited the remains of Mr. Thomas Webb, who died very suddenly, much lamented, ye 8th July 1769. Aged 33 years, he was born in the city of Gloucester in England. This stone, the hand of social friendship rears, whose generous griefs supply a parent's tears. Could friendly wishes stay ye transient breath, a kind companion had not tasted death. The stone was likely carved by gravestone engraver John Homer from Boston. The original gravestone for Thomas Webb can be found in the Granary Burying Ground in Boston, Massachusetts, so anyone who lives locally could go and visit it. And you actually find the skull on this headstone in many other headstones in Fallout 4. So it looks like the developers picked this gravestone and just carbon copied it for some of the other gravestones in Boston, Massachusetts. On the southern outskirts of Salem, we find the Sandy Cove's Con convalescent home, but this place has its own interior cell with its own story, so we'll save this for another video on another day. On the furthest outskirts of the town, right alongside the road, is the Museum of Witchcraft, which I've already covered in another video. Directly next to it, on the top floor of the wrecked building, we find the second major safe in Salem, this one with an expert lock. On the southernmost part of the eastern beach, we find an old outhouse with a sink attached to the outside. Inside, we find a toilet with a closed door that we actually can't open, we can't interact with it. There is a crack in the wood though, and you can peep inside to see that there is a toilet there, but I didn't see any good loot. Right next to it, we find an old lifeguard chair, complete with a burnt book lying on top of it. And directly next to it, we find an abandoned tool shack, which contains the third of the major safes in Salem. This one also with an expert lock. The nearby dock is swarming with three Mirelurks, including one Mirelurk King. There's nothing terribly interesting on the dock, but if you stand at the edge of the dock and you look across the water, we find a number of small islands and rocks. If you look closely, you can see what appears to be the edge of a wing. If you have a jetpack and you have some Psycho, you can fly on over as far as you can go to get to the island where we find a stingray. That's right, a crashed stingray. I tried to cover the locations of many of the crashed stingrays when I did my videos on crashed flights in Fallout 4, but I missed this one at that time, so I'm glad to have found it here. This crashed stingray has been converted into a survival shelter. There's a little shack next to it, which has some minor loot inside. And you can find the previous occupant's body lying on a raft next to the island. He is sadly nothing more than a skeleton now. Now in the northeasternmost corner of Salem, far off in the distance, you can see an island. The island even appears on your map. I tried flying there with my jetpack, but sadly I ran right into the edge of the map. The frustrating thing is that if you look closely, you can see that there is something on the island. I don't know if it's loot or just some interesting rubble to explore, but you sadly can't get there without opening up the console. I bring it up only because if you try to explore it in power armor, you did get stuck in the air and you are gonna run out of AP, which means you're gonna go crashing down into the water and you'll likely lose your power armor suit unless you have Aqua Boy or Aqua Girl and you can breathe underwater. So don't try and fly there because you won't make it. Directly north of the Rook family home, underwater, I found a pipe stretching out into the ocean. I got out of my suit of power armor and went to explore it. I swam alongside and I didn't see a hatch. And when I got to the very end, there is an opening, but it only goes into the pipe a short ways. And the earth was too close to the top of the pipe, so you can't actually go into the opening. Swimming back along the other side of the pipe and you don't find a hatch either. So it's just a pipe. There's no interior cell. There are no secrets, just a pipe. We find connected to a barge via a ladder, a sunken tugboat. You can get to the crow's nest portion of the tugboat, but inside you only find one stim pack. I hopped out of my suit of armor and swam inside the main cabin of the tugboat. And all that was there was a first aid kit filled with a stim pack and some other minor camps. The bottom floor is blocked off with rubble and mud. 
There are a few other shacks with minor loot, but that is the bulk of Salem. Now, Salem was actually first mentioned in Fallout 3, specifically in the Mothership Zeta DLC for Fallout 3. While you're exploring the Zetan Mothership, you stumble upon a recording from someone that the aliens had abducted. It just so happens that they abducted a man who lived in Salem, Massachusetts, named Andrew Endicott in 1697. Here's the full recording of the only other known resident of Salem in the Fallout universe besides Barney. What? Talk into this thing? Just talk? I, I don't have to do anything else? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ow! All right! Ow! I said all right, just stop! <sighs> hello. Um, hello. My name is Andrew Endicott. On the night of May 17th, the year of our Lord 1697, I was... I was taken from my home in Salem Village. I... I do not know where I am exactly, or why I came to be here. I've seen through... windows. The stars, and sun, and beloved Earth. Down there, below me. So it would seem I am aboard some... vessel. Suspended in the ether. Ironically, it would seem so close to where I thought heaven must surely lie. But this is not heaven, and my captors are not angels. I'm not entirely unconvinced that the scripture is wrong, that heaven and hell are reversed. For my captives are devils, demons from my nightmares. Even now, they watch me, make me talk. They seem to want me to tell my story. I know not why. A record of their deeds, perhaps? Or am I just a pawn in some... some evil game? And there are others, other... captives, I mean. From whence they came, I cannot say. Some wear strange dress, as if they are from... a different time. And some are... frozen. As an ice, unmoving, but I think alive. I believe they plan the same fate for me. Will I be frozen too? Will I? Oh, stop it! I did what you said. You wanted me to talk, so I talked. Just leave me. Leave me be. Going back to the Rook family home and heading down to the basement, you can talk with Barney, and he's excited. He heard the machine gun fire from inside the bunker. You did it, didn't you? Huh? I could hear that sweet, sweet machine gun music all the way down here. You almost caught me in Reba Midwalls. Great. Now I'm covered in crab guts. Yeah, and you smell like a fish market. Whew. Now, about that reward. Here's a key to my workshop in the bunker. Reba too should be sitting on the table in there. I'd say you earned her. Now, if you'll excuse me, I believe today is earmarked for some target practice. The Salem Volunteer Militia never rests. As a reward, he gives you a key to open that locked door in the back of the bunker. Inside, on the back table, we find Reba 2, which is a unique legendary sniper rifle, which does 50% more damage against Mirelurks and bugs. Now, if you're evil like that, you can kill Barney for his personal weapon, Reba 1. It's similar to Reba 2, but it does not have a legendary effect. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the full story of Salem. A fun little town with a real world history that stretches back to before the United States of America even became a country. But in this world, it is inhabited by only one man, a friendly yet cantankerous man named Barney, who has a personal and rather odd relationship with his gun named Reba. Thanks for watching, everybody! If you'd like to talk with other like minded individuals about this topic or any other Fallout 4 topic, be sure to click on the invitation link to my Discord server. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers gain access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video today. Thanks for watching from the bottom of my heart, and I'll see you tomorrow morning bright and early with a brand new video.